complexity of human trafficking in South Africa. What is the nature of the problem in your opinion? Good evening and thank you for having uh, me here. Um, as you said, uh, the issue of human trafficking uh, is very complex and due to the hidden nature of, of the phenomenon and uh, non-existence of comprehensive uh, legislation uh, and or harmonized uh, legislation, it's very difficult to collect uh, data and information on uh, human trafficking. And therefore, there are different uh, estimates um, in terms of how big is the problem. However, as organization, um, in cooperation with the government of uh, South Africa, we do encounter um, cases of human trafficking on a regular basis. I can tell you examples of victims of human trafficking, South African nationals that were recruited, transported and exploited from one province to another for the purposes of sexual exploitation or um, uh, domestic servitude. I can tell you also examples of uh, South African nationals that have been recruited with the false uh, promises, deceived for a, a better uh, opportunities and, and a, a great income in a foreign country and lately they've been exploited again for different type of uh, purposes. What I want to emphasize is that, as you mentioned in, in the introduction, um, there is not only trafficking for the purpose of, of sexual exploitation, but uh, we need to also uh, emphasize the trafficking for the purpose of labor exploitation, for example, in fishing industry, in different ports around the, the country, uh, but also in the uh, agriculture and definitely the domestic servitude. Now, let's look at the problem of organ trafficking. How bad is organ trafficking? Uh, we can talk more uh, on a global level. Um, unfortunately, there are not that many studies uh, done uh, in South Africa that looks into the issue of organ trafficking. Um, there was a, a study done uh, some years ago uh, saying that, uh, again, on, on a yearly basis, the profit of uh, organ trafficking uh, is uh, between 500 million to 1.2 billion uh, dollars in a year. So uh, that should be, again, an indicator of um, how big the, the problem may be. Um, we have heard in 2010, uh, again from the media reports, there was some investigation and allegations of uh, organ trafficking happening here in South Africa. How does it work? It follows the pattern of uh, trafficking for different types of exploitation. There is a de demand for certain type of uh, organs, usually it's uh, kidneys and, and livers. So um, the, the, the victims uh, are being lured or deceived and their uh, organs are, be, are being taken away, the surgery has been performed and uh, the organs are being put in, in, into the donors. Uh, the amount of money that, again, uh, from, uh, from the, the studies done uh, worldwide, that people are paying for these organs uh, is from 20,000 US dollars to up to 200,000 US dollars. In some of the cases, um, the victims that the organs have been removed from, they also received a small compensation. Usually it's not even uh, one third of what they may have agreed um, to receive as, as a result of that. Maria, now organizations fighting this good often ask ordinary citizens to be more vigilant. What are some of the signs that perhaps show that someone is, or someone's drug abuse or even worse human trafficking is engaged in those things rather? Okay, um, again, it's, it's a very complex uh, crime and um, it evolves uh, uh, very quickly. Traffickers are using different uh, means, again, to recruit the victims of trafficking. Uh, what I can uh, talk about briefly is uh, from the experiences that we have had uh, by directly working with victims of trafficking, again, for different types of exploitation. In all of the cases, victims are, are, are kept in, in their bondage. They don't have freedom of movement. Uh, they always threaten 
if, uh, for example, they try to run away uh, and report themselves to the rep uh, to the police, that they will be either re uh, deported or uh, again put back into the the prison or returned back to the traffickers. There are usually threats against their uh, well-being of, of of the families. Uh, they're not being paid. Uh, they don't have access to any medical services or any assistance available. What will be the, the way to go about it is uh, there are several uh, helplines that are uh, run starting from the, the relevant government departments but also the civil society organizations in the country. <coughs> so the best way to go is for the public to um, actually report and then uh, the reports will go to the relevant uh, authorities to further uh, investigate uh, the crime and bring the, uh, the traffickers behind the bars. Maria, just finally, a U.S. trafficking report recently found that although South Africa is making significant efforts, it doesn't fully comply with the minimum standards to eliminate trafficking. What would you say are the required minimum standards in dealing with this problem? Just briefly. Uh, very briefly, the, the, ba the three minimum standards are looking into the prevention, uh, the, the uh, protection of victims of human trafficking, and of course the prosecution of traffickers. Prevention, starting from, again, um, uh, talking about the phenomenon from uh, the communities where the victims are being recruited, but raising the awareness to the, the government officials who are working and dealing with, uh, with, uh, with this issue. Uh, uh, as I've mentioned, the uh, protection to the victims of trafficking. Again, uh, Department for Social Development in South Africa has done uh, an amazing work in identifying and accrediting shelter uh, to accommodate uh, victims of human trafficking and to provide uh, a comprehensive psychosocial assistance to them. And finally, a prosecution uh, to uh, traffickers. What is good is that South Africa have signed uh, um, and actually have a comprehensive uh, uh, human trafficking legislation, but unfortunately hasn't been activated yet. So uh, we're all working uh, together uh, again to try to push for uh, promulgating uh, this trafficking and hopefully uh, legislation and hopefully we'll have uh, more successful prosecution uh, or the increased number of prosecutions. We'll, we'll have to leave it there, Mariah. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. That was Maria Nikolovska of the International Organization for Migration. She's an expert in migration and human trafficking. She joined us to discuss the problem of human trafficking.